Well, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us tonight and to come to, as we come together to celebrate World Oceans Day. My co-host, Kelly Paddock, will be assisting me. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box. And as already, I have lost Wi-Fi. You can see that I'm not in a very stable place. So Kelly uh, will take over for the minute or two that I am gone. And uh, well, I'm gonna welcome her to tell her story of being a stream keeper and why she joined us, if that happens. So, um, so uh, slide two, please. I'd like to acknowledge the, with gratitude, as Holly mentioned, that we're on the unceded lands of the Seashelt and Squamish nations. And I'd also like to say that uh, I'm from the Nalakutmuk Nation. My um, grand, great grandmother was Nancy Frances Minabariette from the Cooksbury Band in Spences Bridge. And I have to say that uh, this last week has been quite an emotional week as uh, the residential school was, is, is, is across the river from my territory. So my heart and best wishes go to my relatives as we deal with going forward. Slide three. So I started this, uh, this webinar asking what are stream keepers, but then I, so I'm going to say who are stream keepers to start with. It's someone who's really interested in actively um, wanting to preserve and enhance our local creeks. And they come from all walks of life. They're retired uh, engineers, school teachers, a midwife, and uh, we have many and different ages. And the, uh, the next slide, please. I'd like to give you just a quick brief history of how the Sunshine Coast Stream Keepers came about. Um, uh, when I moved here three, three and a half years ago, the property that I moved on has Malcolm Creek um, going through it. And so I started to wonder if there was salmon in this creek because my activism work in Vancouver, I went to a lot of events to do with fish farms, et cetera. And also I'm very, very interested in, in orcas and was quite concerned about their, their, lack, their lack of food. So I started to go down to the creek a lot and I ran into neighbors and I'd always ask them uh, if they knew that there were salmon in the creek. And I met a fellow stream keeper. She's taken the stream keeper course and law. And she told me that she had seen spawners in the creek. And these are the two pictures that she sent me. So that's how it all started. And from there on, it was like, this is it. We're going to protect these fish. And the uh, motto for our group is we work to protect wild salmon and their habitat. Next slide, please. So the circle of life of, of salmon is, uh, and we can't not admit today, talk and go into what stream keepers do without acknowledging really the difficulty that, that salmon are having in, a, in our province. There, there are so many challenges that they have, aside from climate crisis, habitat lodge, lodge loss, which now is logging because it reduces the shade, silt and dirt goes into the water and chokes out the eggs, uh, fish farms, overfishing pollution. So they really have a lot going uh, against them, but they're also extremely resilient, they're tenacious and they really are a gift. So uh, we're going to go through this presentation and we're gonna celebrate salmon and we're gonna let you know what stream keepers do in helping salmon. Next slide. So you can see 
we get to work in the best office ever. This is where we get to go and walk up creeks. And this is at Roberts Creek. And when we do this work, we're just, we're all smiling and we're happy and we wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Next slide. We have to acknowledge uh, that we are backed and we follow the guidelines of the Pacific Streamkeepers Federation. And it's been since 1995 that they first became about and put together the modules for their program. So we're very thankful and we work very closely with them under their direction. Slide number eight. So this is the this was the streamkeepers training that I was in. It's at uh, Sergeant Bay Colvin Creek, and it's in September 2018. Next slide. And this gives you an idea of the different uh, subjects that we we cover in our and that are available. Water quality, juvenile trapping for invertebrate survey, and also spawning survey. Next slide. So this is two other groups of stream keepers. The uh, one on the, the left is at Malcolm Creek, and the one in the corner is at Chaster Creek. And both of these were in 2019. And when you finish a stream keepers course, you get a certificate and a badge. And this is Kelly's. <laughs> Next one, please. This is, uh, uh, this is during the stream keeper course, and this is teaching us about trapping. So these are the, the trip, the fish that we caught overnight. And it, it, when we were doing this one, they were all cutthroat. Next slide. This uh, is showing the doing a bankful measurement where we measure the, the depth of the water and also how wide the creek is. And the other one uh, on the right is us looking for invertebrates that are in the water. And I didn't think that I would enjoy that so much because I don't consider myself a bug person, but I have to say that it was actually probably the most interesting part of the Streamkeeper two-day course. Next slide. This is a data sheet that we fill in and we, uh, we uh, do temperature, pH, turbidity, and uh, the water quality and uh, each creek at the end, we do this about three or four times during the year and then every month during the summer. And each creek you can see, I'm very happy to say that of the four creeks that we are monitoring right now, uh, Malcolm, Roberts Creek, Chaster Creek and Langdale, all of them scored in the good range. So that's excellent. And we're gonna try and keep them there. Next slide. So you can see that how I made a point of putting this slide in and writing on it, because this is our motto when we're stream keeping, we record, record, record. We put everything on paper because we don't rely our, on ourselves to remember things. And um, this gets entered into the Pacific Streamkeepers Federation website. It's available for the public to look at. And Kelly will put that website in the chat. And also in, during the spawning season, we send our weekly escapement reports and that is goes to the DFO and they send a report out every, every, every um, week. So next slide.
So uh, we have to look at how many creeks there are on the Sunshine Coast. I counted between uh, Port Mellon and Sargent Bay at least 30. And right now, stream keepers are, are actively and regularly monitoring four of those. Next slide. So Langdale Creek, next slide. Malcolm Creek, next slide. Shasta Creek, next slide. Next slide. Next slide. So what I really wanted everyone to see um, by putting these slides in is just how significant the, uh, the, the watersheds are on the Sunshine Coast. And we can see how logging either in cut blocks or private properties really, really affects the lower, the, the area where we usually only see at the estuary at the beaches. So our next section is the fish that we find in our creek. This, this fish is a cutthroat. Next slide. And we have another cutthroat, and this was in Malcolm Creek. And you can see that, that uh, they're very different. Next slide. That, the, the last one was a cutthroat, and this is a cutthroat. And look how different they are. And this was at Dakota Creek. Next slide. This is a coho that we found at uh, also at Dakota Creek, very large one. Pro, um, it should be going out to the ocean by this point. Next slide. This is a Roberts Creek coho. Next slide. Uh, this is a sculpin, which is a very unusual fish. It's a ground feeder. Next slide. Next slide. And this is a sculpin. No, sorry, this is a stickleback, sorry, um, which was we found at the estuary of Roberts Creek. And this is a pink, pink salmon. Next slide. This is also a pink salmon and all these beautiful shots that we've just seen are courtesy of Larry Reed. And the next uh, uh, slide is a video. And as you watch this, please just uh, sit back and enjoy being in the world of these beautiful little fry. There's cutthroat and coho. The cut the coho have white on them.
So isn't it wonderful to see all of that alight that just emerges from the gravel? Gravel, and that's why we have to be so careful between the fall and, and the late spring to make sure we don't damage any of the eggs. So the next section is going to be on spawning counts. And this, this is a beautiful shot of Chum in Roberts Creek. Next slide. This is really interesting. We have been doing uh, salmon survey counts on four creeks. If you look at the numbers between 2019 and 2020 in Roberts Creek, you'd see a huge jump. And that it was just so fun this last fall to go on the creek and just to see the creek was just alive with salmon, particularly above Lower Road Bridge. And Chaster Creek was quite discouraging in 2019 because we know there's lots of people who love Chaster Creek. We have a really good group that, that looks after Chaster Creek and they only found four last in 2019. Last year, they found a whopping 103. Langdale um, has had so many challenges. Um, I don't know if people know that, that Langdale used to run on the other side of Highway 101. So it's uh, not very easy for salmon. And Malcolm Creek, which I sort of call my creek, um, I was really excited in 2019 when we saw 11 live coho. Next slide. And this is um, us, uh, this is a typical fall beautiful day when we get to do our spawning counts. And if you notice that I'm, I have poles on in my hands, the usual protocol with stream keeping to look for in for spawning salmon and undercuts is with a pole. And, and uh, so we were doing that because there's quite a few undercuts in Roberts Creek. Next slide. This is uh, Libby, and this is at Malcolm Creek, just below Lower Road, and uh, it's a waterfall. And if you notice that Libby is using a GoPro camera, and that is how we've gotten most of the video and some of these beautiful shots in that we, uh, Larry has put this together and donated two to the stream keepers. And this is how we uh, look in the water to find the spawning salmon. It's very, it's a really wonderful way to look for them. Next slide. And this is Larry. He's the one that put the GoPro together. And this is at Roberts Creek above the confluence of Clack Creek and Roberts Creek. Next slide. When you become a stream keeper, you, you, use, you get used to using letters to write down on your data report. So we know what LWD means, and that means large woody debris. And uh, we never know what we're gonna come across when we're doing stream keeping work. This is Chaster Creek, this is Lorraine and Angela, and uh, a big tree has fallen across the creek. Um, which isn't a bad thing for the creek. It gives fish shade and uh, it decomposes and adds to the ecosystem. Next slide. The next few uh, vi shots will be from Larry Reed, and these are just amazing shots. This is uh, a spawning chum. Next slide.
This is a female chum with the black heavy line going down its side. Next slide. And this is a beautiful, beautiful shot of, of uh, it looks like two female chum salmon. Next slide. And this is a really interesting shot. At the front there, you'll see a chum which looks like it's a male, it's getting the hump, uh, the hook nose and the teeth. And uh, it's hard to see, but right beside it, uh, just right up beside it, there's a, actually a coho in there, um, which is just an interesting shot. Next slide. Uh, this was an exciting one to find in Malcolm Creek. It's a coho and it was just below the culvert at Roy Road, which is quite near the beach access. And uh, uh, the culvert there is really an impediment to the coho, but we were excited to see this one. Next slide. And this one didn't want us to see him at all. This, uh, uh, this was probably one of the most exciting ones that I saw um, there was it's a coho and it's above that culvert that actually is a, is a deterrent for salmon to come through. But this, uh, this uh, coho was tenacious and it got up through that culvert and uh, it was above. So that gives us hope. And that's one of the projects that we are trying to work on is to uh, get that culvert so that um, uh, it is fish, fish friendly. Next, next slide. And when we uh, find uh, the, the salmon carcasses, we measure them. Next slide. And sometimes not everyone's uh, volunteers for this job, but we dissect them to, to uh, find out how much they've spawned, whether they fully or just partly spawned. And we can tell by the percentage of eggs or milk that was left. And then we record that data. Next slide. And we, we, we find um, many, many carcasses. And we have to say that when we find them, we do, feel, we do treat them with respect and we feel respect because they really have given all and, uh, and uh, we can't take them for granted. Next slide. And I'm going to let you watch uh, a video uh, of, of 2014, I believe, of the pink salmon. And uh, this was the, uh, an amazing year for pink salmon that year. So please watch how they, they, um, they try and get to be the one that fertilizes the eggs. And actually, in this video, you'll actually see the pink spawning. I will, and watch for the, the white milk.
And as, as we leave that section, I, I really would like everyone to feel and think about each of these fish as a hero because they they really have uh, gone many challenges and yet they made it back to their their, their home where they the place of their birth and were willing to preserve their species. So we're going to turn to another side of our stream keeping activities. And this is our monthly invasive plant removal. Next slide. Uh, Roberts Creek, obviously. And uh, we have been doing this probably for a year and a half, the last Saturday of the month. Uh, the, the kinds of plants that we remove are English ivy, blackberry, Himalayan balsam, laurel, and knotweed. And I just want to, and uh, I just want to mention that the, if you see here, the ivy is covering the trees, which is a really bad thing for trees that are in a riparian area because the ivy can uh, cause those trees to fall um, by um, by either to by. There's a theory that they kill the trees, um, and the other um, I think more documented reason is that they become like a sail when the wind blows. So we uh, have removed, we removed the bottom five to six feet of the ivy. Next slide. And we have so many community volunteers that they come out on a regular basis. They volunteer their vehicles to take the, uh, the ivy and laurel to the green waste. And you can just see how much we take away. It's quite amazing how a few people can really do a lot in two hours. And then I want to uh, say that we replace what we take with, uh, with native plants and we get grants from Pacific Salmon Foundation. And we've just been recently approved for a grant from the SCRD for $1,200 so that we can buy some more native plants. So we're really thankful for that. Next slide. So this is our newest group that has started to uh, remove invasives. We had a, uh, some two women from Seashell who said, let's do one in Seashell. So we've decided on Chapman Creek at the Brookman Park. And this is their first event. And look how much they were able to take off the trees and off the ground. So, and I'd like to take a shout out to the city of Seashell because they come on the following Monday to remove what we have taken down. So that's a huge, huge help to us. Next slide. So now we're going to go on to fly, uh, fry trapping. And uh, I'd have to say that we do this um, and we do no harm to the fish that we trap. And also we, we have a special light license uh, to do this work. And the reasons that we do this, there's a few reasons is um, it, each creek that gets identified as a fish bearing stream has more protection from the government. And they don't just take word of mouth that a creek has fish in it. We have to provide official records and pictures. So by doing this, we get an idea of the different kinds and species of fish in the creek, their ages, and um, also whether it's a healthy creek, because if it's not healthy, then um, we know that it's, it needs work. Next slide. And someone ha has uh, someone's not muted there. Um, so this uh, this is uh, Anne and Jean preparing the traps, and we we uh, bait them with natural products like roe or herring. Next slide.
And this is more pictures of us doing our fry trapping. Next, and this actually is where we found the stickleback right here at the estuary of Roberts Creek. Next slide. And this is Libby holding up uh, a coho. Uh, and the next slide. And uh, I'd like to, this is, uh, next slide is Kelly holding up the same coho. And I'd like to say that the reason we were so excited was because the previous fall, uh, oh, missed Kelly. Um, the previous fall, we only saw two coho and, uh, and that were alive and two that were dead. So we didn't know whether any of them had the opportunity to spawn. So when we found these little fry, we were just super excited. So this is uh, Dakota Creek. Um, this is us doing uh, fry trapping there and you can see the different terrain of the different creeks. Next slide. And this is Langdale Creek. It's uh, Brian and Ryan uh, doing the trapping there. And you can see where we put the traps into the, into the bucket and then we uh, measure them. Next slide. So now we're going to go into uh, two projects that we have taken on as the Streamkeeper group. The first one we've called climate change and salmonid. And uh, the, the reason is because of the concern of water temperatures in the, in the creeks. Next slide. And I had to say that we couldn't have a PowerPoint presentation without one graph. So this is our graph. And it shows where uh, the preferred area for the temperature of salmon. And you can see when it gets above 15, it gradually goes down and actually the mortality rate is, is super high when the temperature goes up between the 15 and 20 degrees. Next slide. So this is the history of where, how we got to be, have this project is uh, weekly, uh, we have people, our volunteers uh, monitor and take the temperature of, a, of the creek each week. And then we, we're recording that data. And then the DFO community advisor uh, donated six uh, temperature loggers to us, which are, get installed in a creek and they record the temperature every hour of every day, of every week, of every month and of every year. So we, we ha, uh, have installed those and the middle picture is just showing how we, we connected up to a computer. And I was going to say that we have amazing volunteers who have many talents and we're really thankful for that. Next slide. Okay, uh, I think we, there was one slide missing there. Um, and it was uh, showing a pipe with a chain um, and a, a, the location. So that's where we put that little orange temperature logger. We, we uh, put it into the pipe and then we install it onto a rock and then it stays in the creek uh, for the duration. And every three months, uh, Brian goes, da goes and downloads the data and then the reason we want this, this data is we want to keep track of how warm our creeks are getting on the Sunshine Coast, especially with our longer, drier, hotter summers that we've had. And so our next project that um, we 
we feel really, really uh, hits a really strong chord for, with us is protecting the riparian areas. And we the, the riparian areas really is how we protect our salmon. Uh, so let's, the next slide. So here is uh, Malcolm Creek and you can see all the ferns and the trees. And uh, this is an example of a healthy looking uh, riparian area. And the next slide. So uh, we, when a, in a riparian area, um, we have so many creeks in our, in our, on the Sunshine Coast that go through private properties. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, we keep those riparian uh, areas healthy. And the way to do that is to make sure we have native trees because they provide critical shade to keep the water cool. They help to stabilize the banks and soil so that they don't erode. They also drop leaves and twigs that fall into the stream and they feed the uh, insects and also, and then those insects in turn uh, are prey for the salmon. And uh, we, uh, good salmon habitat is cool pools and, and riffles. And uh, so we, we want to make sure too that we have places on the creek that have shade like uh, large woody debris, as I mentioned earlier, where the salmon can hide and find shelter. Next slide. So here we are, I guess we're at the end of our presentation. So I wanted to do a huge shout out to the people that have worked with us, that have given us uh, photos and the maps and uh, really thank you very much. Next slide. And this slide I am going to read because I don't want to miss anyone. And I really feel uh, very, very much gratitude for all the help that we've been given. Special thank you to the following. The Pacific Salmon Foundation, the Pacific Streamkeepers Federation, our DFO Community Advisor, the SCRD, and generous individuals from our community with personal donations. With this financial support, Streamkeepers have been able to host two-day training sessions, purchase native plants to replace the invasive plants we remove, and also purchase important equipment that enables our group to continue to assess and monitor the creeks on the Sunshine Coast. And a very special thank you today for the Sunshine Coast Conservation Association for all their work in putting on this special event to celebrate World Oceans Day. Thank you all, because we know there's a lot of work behind the scenes to go that to put an event like this together. Next slide. And this is our contact information. If you have any questions, you can uh, send us an email. Uh, there's our, I think Kelly's gonna put all of this on in the chat. Um, it's our uh, website, Sunshine Coast Stream Keepers, which can keep you up to date on our events and also Salmon News. Uh, we have a Facebook, uh, site, which so please like and follow us. And I just like to say a big thank you very much for everyone who attended the webinar. And if you have any questions or like to join our work in some way, even in some small way, we, we really welcome you. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. So that was so great. I, I'll just step in here to say big, big warm thank you. It's so appreciative that you take the time this evening to do a presentation and share your knowledge and your experience and these amazing photos and videos. It was wonderful. I know I learned a lot. I'm sure everyone else did as well. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen now um, just so that we can see each other's faces if people choose to have their cameras on. And yeah, we'll open up for questions. If anyone has any comments or questions they were thinking about, if you can pop them in the chat, that would be wonderful. I think if it's okay, I'll start with a question for you. Are you okay with that? <laughs> 
Oh, sure. Go ahead. I can't promise I'll be able to answer, but I'll try. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, you mentioned around one of the salmon having a partial spawn. And I was wondering, I didn't realize that salmon might only partially lay their eggs or partially fertilize eggs. And do you know why, why that might be? Well, um, from what I've, I've watched videos on this and um, females can actually have um, numerous reds and that reds are where it's what it's called where the female lays her eggs and then the male comes over and fertilizes them. So she can have numerous reds. So uh, some of the fish that we saw were only half, like half of the eggs were gone or half the milk was gone. Some of them, the milk was all gone and some of them, the eggs were all gone. So they really can um, do partial, partial pond spawning. Okay, Shirley, we have uh, a question okay. um, from somebody named Leonie Croy. Thank you, Leonie. Leonie was wondering, can you speak to the pools in Langdale Creek? Did stream keepers do that? Oh, um, I, th I think you're referring to the, I think there's five to seven pools there that were made, um, built when the highway was put, when the highway, uh, the creek was put on the other side of the highway. And um, in my presentation, you'll, uh, you've seen the pictures of Ryan and Brian. Well, Ryan has taken on the pools and he has uh, been working really hard to help the pools um, open up the pipe so that the water can flow through. Um, because like, for whatever reason, they were left for quite a few years. Um, and so the water became quite stagnant. So right now, our, uh, he's wor we're working at trying to get salmon coming back up there again. This last year, he found, I don't know, five or six chum. So, uh, but to this point, the only fish we've found in those ponds has been uh, native cutthroat. So, um, but we are working on, on those ponds and pools. Thank, thank you for knowing about them. We, I didn't know, not very many people know that they actually are there. I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, I did uh, invite everyone to uh, join one of the invasive plant removals at Roberts Creek or at uh, Chapman Creek. And I put the, um, the dates and the times uh, to meet for those events. So anyone is welcome to join and uh, the more the merrier and it's a real good way to get out, visit the creeks, meet us a little bit and, um, and do some really good work. And I think I'll put out there some of the, you know, if, if you have a creek near your home um, and you'd like to start monitoring it, um, you don't have to take the stream keepers training to, to do this work. Um, we had to postpone our training three times because of COVID. So um, quite a few of our stream keepers haven't done the training yet, but one of the jo jobs that we would love to have done is um, on, if there's a creek near your home, is to just do a weekly temperature on that creek. That would be really, really good information for us to have. And uh, there's, you know, there's lots of different jobs that uh, we have that uh, we'd love people to join us. And so we throw that out there for everyone to come and join us and, and uh, participate because it's really fun. We have a lot of fun together. So Shirley, if I wanted to um, take on a little that's near my place and do a weekly temperature check. I could just take my digital meat thermometer down to the creek and, uh, once a week and, and then I would send it to the um, Sunshine Coast Stream Keepers Gmail account. Is that what I would do? Uh, what you would do is um, you would send it at the end of the month to Brian. Um, because he is, everyone at the end of the month sends their information to him and then he makes charts for it and then sends it out to us so that we can see. Um, and what we did as an interesting 
um, check is that because we had already installed these temperature loggers in the creek, we, um, we took that data and, and overlaid it with the, the data of our volunteers that had taken the weekly temperatures and they were spot on. So that was really interesting. And I do wanna to stress too, the reason that we want people to be, you know, go to the creeks once a week to do the temperature is we really need eyes on the creek. We need people to um, see what changes could be happening. Um, my personal experience with that was, um, the, I think the first fall that I moved here and I went down to the mouth of Malcolm Creek and, uh, and uh, someone had thrown all of their uh, green waste into the creek and it had all come down to the end and, and essentially uh, dammed the, the creek so that if there were any spawners that wanted to come up, they couldn't. So I removed all the green waste, but I, I thought to myself, if you know what what if I wasn't watching, then you know we could have lost quite a few spawning salmon so, and and the, the future of that creek's salmon population. So so by having eyes on the creek, it really is a huge huge part of our work. Okay, Shirley, I see that Brian has um, posted his uh, Gmail account. So thank you very much for doing that, okay. Brian. And so, yeah, if you uh, want to be a citizen scientist and be uh, someone monitoring your own local creek, you can have a Gmail account that you can send to. And if you have lost that, you can always contact Shirley at Streamkeepers uh, Gmail account, which has been posted, but I will repost it right now. And it's quite an easy one to remember. It's just scstreamkeepers at gmail.com. So it, but it's good to, and so we would, if we think about all the creeks that are on the Sunshine Coast, if we could find our goal, I didn't mention this, but one of the original goals of when we started um, Stream Keepers was we wanted to, um, we want to have every creek on the Sunshine Coast be, have stewards for it. And I didn't mention also that we became a society so that our volunteers could uh, have be insured. We have volunteer insurance. And also we became a society because we, need, we needed to apply for grants. So that's where the Sunshine Coast Streamkeeper Society came from. There were streamkeepers working on the coast, but that is how our official group started was um, in 2019. So, August 2019. So it doesn't look like there's any more questions. So no, there's no more questions. Oh. I just want to say, Shirley, uh, a big thank you from all of us, oh. um, because honestly, if it wasn't for you, this uh, society wouldn't oh. have formed. And it's just absolutely amazing to um, be involved in this and just see how incredibly it's grown and the support and the financial support and obviously there's a lot of people in on the sunshine coast that love salmon and love our creeks and love the ocean so um we're all working together to to make it a clean environment and a healthy one so and thank you very much shirley and thank you kelly for your support yeah that entirely. Thanks, Kelly. And thank you so much, Shirley. Your, your knowledge, your experience is profound, and I really appreciate you sharing it with all of us. Hopefully, you'll get some new volunteers out of this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I hope that next time I have a better Wi-Fi connection, and I want to thank everyone for being patient. I'm not sure how it came across, but uh, I, hope that it, I hope it came across okay. So thank you everyone yeah, again for it was great. Coming. It was it was wonderful. Yeah, we were definitely able to hear hear the message loud and clear, which was great. And if anyone does want to rewatch this or any of the other webinars, as I mentioned earlier, they will be on the um, SCCA YouTube channel. Um, I'm also going to put a little a little plug in here for the SCCA because we are able to offer this um, this film festival completely free for anyone who's wanting to tune in. And it would be wonderful if you've enjoyed the films, if you've enjoyed the webinars, to consider giving us a donation to support our conservation initiatives or becoming a, um, an annual member. Um, all of that is greatly appreciated. 
Um, I will also say that there are um, the films as a part of our film festival. There's a few that I wanted to just make a note of that might be ones you want to see and, and learn more about after seeing this presentation. Um, we kind of have a whole set of them that are in this stream keepers slash restoration um, theme. So there's an urban salmon documentary, which is one of the short films. Um, and there's a Mosquito Creek salmon habitat restoration. There's a beach restoration project short film and another short called Blue Carbon. So please go and check those out if you have not already. Um, and lastly is we have our final, the SCCA is hosting our final webinar tomorrow evening on eelgrass restoration. So hopefully um, you have that blocked off in your calendar for, for tomorrow, same time as this one, 7 p.m. Um, and you'll get the link in the morning in your inbox. So we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And until then, we will see you later. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Shirley and Kelly. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.